Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan, and today we are talking creepers. <laughs> what the hell is that? Who knows? We're going to find out right now. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> All right, if you dig this kind of channel and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the support for the channel. Then, instead of me saying all the different ways to support the channel, just subscribe if you haven't, and then do me a favor and hit the notifications. Watch it when you get notified. I appreciate the support. Let's dive into this one. This one's going to be a little interesting. So this one is based off a five-part series of an article that came out recently or set of articles that came out recently from USA Today, Steven Ruiz did a really nice job about trying to kind of pull a bunch of things together about how and why pressure is so important in the league. And so there's a five part series and a lot of it, he did a really nice job of making things that are probably really complex to people who are out of the football sphere into things that are digestible, easy to understand. And so he talks about why pressure is important, how defensive coordinators try to manipulate pass protection, cover zero, creepers, what we're talking about today, and then potentially what the future of kind of pressure on the quarterback looks like at the NFL level and how it kind of comes from the ground up or from the lower levels up into the higher levels now. And so it was really enjoyable for a handful of different reasons. Elements of it I thought uh, I have some issues with, which is why we're going to take a peek at one of these and spend some time talking about exactly what creepers are because he goes into one specific game against Baker Mayfield and the Titans week one of last year and basically says that creepers are the reason why they got crushed. And it made me think, well, you know, it'd be interesting to go back and look at that. And then he gave me a gift basket of the Excel spreadsheet that had all the plays in it, which is in the article. So I didn't have to do any work. So I thought handmade put it on a tee for me we got a video creepers but before i get into that i really want to say what i thought he did really well and it was a unique experience for me because it brought me back to a little bit of my own playing days is we talk about pass protection a lot on this channel because it is very important for quarterbacks to have a high understanding of what that looks like but by no means are there only a set of ways to do it but i think that there are some core universal principles that I think he tries and get, does a nice job getting pretty close to how best to understand them. And so I'm just gonna quickly go through them and then maybe talk about how maybe he maybe misidentifies some of those things or, or leaves a little bit left on the bone as far as better understanding the pass pro. So in essence, we're gonna only talk five six man protection here. So in reality, there's only a few ways to do this. There are, and not that's not really true. There's only a handful of normal kind of everyday usual tools that we'll use in five and six man protection. And really for the offensive line, they're the same. They really are for the most part. So we're going to talk about three. So there is essentially the full slide, the half slide, which I don't think most people use, you know, outside in the, in the NFL, as far as specifically that, and I'll talk about how we can get into that and how he gets into it in this article. And then man, protection and really that's the one that i kind of have, have a little bit of issues with some of there there's a lot of nuance as far as what that looks like so we've got man half slide full slide and so full slide pretty self-explanatory the whole offensive line is going to take a gap to either their left or their right and usually a back or tight end is going to come off the one of those sides to protect the edges so it's going to be a full slide usually six man can be five man but usually just six man half slide just what it sounds like usually half the line is going to slide one way and then he and many people I've heard talk about it say there's a half slide and a man side. And for me, they're really not half slide, man slide kind of elements. And we'll talk about and show an image from the article about exactly what I'm talking about. That man side is really just two on two. You're not going to lock up man if they try to twist or game. You're going to play two on two zone and three on three zone. And so it's really just kind of sliding each way, splitting the, the front. And then we have what he calls man uh, protection. And so for me, the man protection element of that is usually more of a bear check that you get into that you often hear people refer to as 5-0, meaning five on five. Well, in reality, it's not really man protection. It's usually the five offensive linemen have, if we're in an even front, the four down defensive linemen and the mic. And then slide protection, either half slide or full slide, you are usually sliding to one of the outside linebackers. 
that's what they're sliding to. So sliding to an outside linebacker, solid protection or man protection, solid to the back. And so that's where one of the issues I had was just kind of the baseline understanding of it. So there's only a couple ways to do it. Really, we'll say three ways to do it. Solid, the line has the four down in the mic. Slide, half the line is sliding one way to a linebacker. The other half has two on two with the defensive tackle and the defensive end. And then full slide, which is something you don't see a whole lot of usually in the league. You can, especially in quick game and some blitz pickup elements. And there are some advantages to doing that, what we'll talk about. But in reality, you don't see that a lot because it creates some open edges. But ironically, and this is where I thought it was interesting for me, I played for Mike Tice. He was a head coach in Minnesota. I was there for a hot minute, half a season with Mike Tice. So I got to experience a little bit of how they operated their offensive line. And at that time, we had a really smart center, Matt Burke, played in the league forever. And uh, they used to be, more than anybody I was ever around in the league, a full slide team. And it was basically an answer for everything. And it was just kind of, you're going to get pressure, full slide it, we got a gap. And uh, well, maybe if they if we they try to overload us, we'll have someone try to take two, meaning that they basically kind of try to block two guys and not let them get home to the quarterback, but get the ball out, not have a free runner on the quarterback. And that's one of the things I thought he did a really nice job of talking about in the article about how important it is to protect the A and the B gap. So full slide protects the A and the B gaps almost always. It's really difficult to get pressure through the A and the B gaps in a full slide. Now, you, it's hard to hold on and throw the ball down the field. But that's how you marry those things together with concepts. So that was the essence that I really loved about the article. Then he kind of goes down some rabbit holes about, you know, uh, Sam Darnold seeing ghosts, which we can talk about zero at another time, but I already have a video on that game. And this one that I really want to talk about, which everybody in the football world, I feel like is enamored with what they call simulated pressures or creepers. And so not being a defensive guy, I kind of get a chuckle out of this stuff. But on the offensive side of the ball, there really is no difference, you know, from a quarterback perspective. Now, maybe as a play caller perspective, there could be some difference or how you teach the pass pro or how you're teaching unique, specific techniques at the line of scrimmage. But they're only bringing four guys, and usually they're not rushing their primary rushers. Like, I, it's not as exotic as I think maybe the perception of it is outside the league. And so what the hell is a creeper? What the hell is a simulated pressure? Now, there's a bunch of different ways to find out online. You can Google it. I'd Googled it before. But I think what I did that I just asked a handful of people that I respect in the space on the defensive side of the ball. And in essence, this is how I best describe it. A simulated pressure and a creeper, at the end of the day, is the same thing. They are rushing non-traditional rushers and dropping traditional rushers. So some sort of zone pressure. Now, people call it dog zone, fire zone, whatever you want to call it, however it's manipulated. The difference is, for me is a simulated pressure is when the defense is showing it. So they're going to all be up at the line of scrimmage, or many of them up at the line of scrimmage, looking like they're going to pump block you. And then people will drop off from a bunch of different reasons, whether they're reading defensive offensive linemen, or they've already got it pre-called, whatever. They are simulating a pressure. Creepers are basically the opposite. They are not going to show it, and they're going to blitz from a little bit of depth. Now, I've had some people tell me, One's for run, one's for pass. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, for me, at the end of the day, they're bringing non-traditional rushers, which is usually an offensive advantage. I'd rather have a DB rushing than a defensive end. And they're coming from depth if it's a creeper. Now, you have to have tools to be able to allow you to block those things up that we're going to look at. But for the most part, you know, there's a lot of you know smoke and mirrors to bring four guys. If I see two safeties back there and I'm playing quarterback and most quarterbacks in the world, they see two safeties or people running back to the half field, they think that they're fine. And in reality, they should be fine. Now, will they get hit sometimes? Will people make mistakes? Will people lose one-on-one -on -one blocks? Absolutely. That happens. But as far as scheme, who's got the, who's got the pen last? For me, the creeper game, it just, I, I don't, I struggle to understand exactly why it gets so much recognition and why it gives so much people trouble. And so when he went after, not when he went after, when he used this game, the Titans versus the Browns week one, and basically Baker imploding because of these seven snaps of Creeper, and he gave me the Excel spreadsheet that told me the exact plays to where to find them, uh, I said, let's do it. So here we go. Baker, Creeper, see if it really matters. So the first one here, third down, 
13 yards to go. They're going to hit hit us. I'll let it play once just so you can experience it. Basically, this is a corner pressure. Corner blitz from up top. You can watch. If you're playing quarterback, though, you're watching the safeties. You see the rotation. They're pulling the string to the left. There's two safeties, though. That nickel is running back. There's two safeties. It's basically Tampa 2. It's not basically Tampa 2. It's Tampa 2. See that Mike running from the A-gap trying to get all the way down the field? This is a third and 13. So I can't speak to the scheme. I can tell you in Tampa 2, if you've got a middle hook by the two or the three, which they have the three here, I'm guessing there's a tight end, the ball needs to go there. Now, all that being said, creeper, guy coming from depth, the right tackle just takes an L. This isn't this isn't anything to do with we're not creeping anybody other than the right tackle. That's an L. Now, should Baker take the correct drop and throw it to the guy in the middle of the field? Probably. One more time. I mean, just take a big three, one, two, three, and throw it. Anticipate it right down the pipe, right down the middle of the hashes. It's open. I don't know what the read is. I don't pretend to know what the read is. I wasn't in the room. I don't know what this concept is. I can tell you that I'm going to guess that that wide receiver up top jacked Baker Mayfield. When that corner blitzes, usually you have a corner blitz adjustment, like a sight adjust, which is usually a skip off the line. You catch and throw it. It looks like Baker's looking that way, and then he doesn't get a route out of that guy. Is what If I had to guess and put money on it, that's what happened. But for me, if I see two safeties and I see someone running down the pipe like Tampa 2, I'm going to attack the middle hook. Boom. So is that on the play caller? Is that on the wide receiver coach? Is that on the wide receiver? Is that on bad ball? I don't know. But do I think it's on the creeper? I don't know. The right tackle just took an L. So I have a hard time blaming it on an exotic pressure, which is really just bringing four. I mean, then... Let's talk about the pressure. So the right tackle takes an L. All right, let's talk pass pro here. They are blitzing. The creeper is off the screen to the left. So we've got six in here. And the most important one is the back. So we've got six-man protection. One of them, they're probably sliding one way. This back here, though, this is the back to watch. This is why it's so important as a running back to be able to block and understand pass pro. He comes off, and he is chipping here or taking the edge off the defensive end. Well, his creeper... The guy he's supposed to be blocking is coming free. He can't go chip. You can only chip if you're set to get out on your check down. You can't go chip when your guy's blitzing. That's, I mean, how is that on Baker or on the play caller or on the offensive line coach? I mean, it doesn't get easier than that. Rushing four. Look at Tampa 255 running to the pipe. I mean, 85 gets the ball right there. That's wide open. Now, he's already taken the L at the right tackle. But, I mean, you know, creeper right tackle? I don't think so. Now, hold on to the ball? Sure. But, you know, is that a creeper getting the sack? No, that's a right tackle taking the L. Next one here, we got another creeper. This one is just the mic coming. So, I mean, again, it's only four guys coming. This looks like closed, and they're just throwing a quick out. This is like basically spacing with a quick out up top. I mean, look at all those hitches all over the place. Norm Turner would be excited. But, I mean, is that causing issues? Are we, are we losing sleep over this creeper? So, so far, two creepers. Now, there's a sack, but I wouldn't say this, the creeper got the sack. Even though there was a major malfunction with the pass pro from the back. But the pass pro from the back didn't even get the issue. We shift him in. Here comes the mic. Left end is dropping. Again, pretty obvious which end is dropping. You know, the guy who's standing up. It's been a tell in the league for 30 years. But again, even if the quick out wasn't open, you still got a defensive end type guy dropping. Even if he is a linebacker. I have no idea what 58 is. So the next one. First and 20, all bad here. First and 20, three by one. Now we're blocking. Now we have seven in. So 
seven and there's a safety, we're good to go. Like this is not a quarterback issue. Now, to me, all they're running here is all go down here to the bottom, a seam and a go. Now, this is a bad sack, but is this a creeper sack? Or is this just a bad concept with a receiver down here who gets jacked by the corner? Can't let that happen. This is a hole shot or a check down. So concept-wise, again, they have, they're have they keeping seven in. There's no issues. We've got the tight end staying in. We've got the back staying in. They can handle seven right here. Let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom. You see two safeties in seven-man protection, you're not worried about anything. Uh, I, I'm telling you. Right here, this is all go just to this half of the field. So we're going to get a seam here. And we're going to get what should be a best release, meaning he can go in or out, up the pipe. And all we're going to do is go two-on-one on, one on this safety. Well, that's operating under the assumption that the corner doesn't jack an NFL wide receiver in space. So once that happens, the ball needs to go right here to the check down. Boom, from the pocket. One, two, three, no to the seam. No, your dude gets jacked outside right here. Three, as fast as you can. Now... Is this on Baker? Yeah. this You, you got to get through your reads. But is this a creeper? I mean, they're rushing four and a nickel type to take a shot down the field and get to the check down. Like, it doesn't get easier than that. There's you, there's no hots. There's no anything. One, two, three. You know, I can't. I don't understand why he's taking five steps unless they're coaching him up. Maybe they are. I don't, couldn't tell you. But I don't know why he's bailing and not just getting to the check down. I know why he's bailing. He sees this huge cavern. But this isn't the Big 12. You can't run away from everybody. Uh, just get it to the check down. Go through the decision-making process here. Now, maybe they get him a little bit with the two-trap. You know, but that guy's so deep over the top. And this is kind of a unique coverage-wise. But it's at the end of the day, it's still Tampa 2. It's an exotic way to get to Tampa 2. You see how that safety comes all the way from the opposite hash? That's why that hole shot would be so good. You would think that you would be able to get this hole shot. I mean, this is why, this is a defensive guys crack me up. You're going to have this cat come from all the way over here and basically play two trap backer. So we're going to get a cloud here. This guy's coming all the way over the top here. We're going to get one of these guys to run here. And I mean, we should, this is a good call. If he doesn't get jacked, best release out here. Yes, please. You're not going to get the scene because this guy's right in the area. But this should be a great shot. But if it's not, this guy, he's got to be able to help the coordinator, help the play caller. Get it down to the check down. Rushing four, taking a sack on this, on a shot play. When these shot plays are called, if it's not there, you if it's there, you rip it. If it's not, get it to the check down. I mean, just get it to the check down. But Creeper... Thumbnail. Should play a thumbnail game on this channel. Thumbnail. Whew. All right. So, Creeper. I would argue that it's neither so far as 0 for 3 Creeper effectiveness. Next one here. This is a third and 16. Again, crazy exotic way to get to basically Tampa 2. Look at the guy running down the pipe. I mean, I just don't understand what that guy takes away. To me, this is on Baker again. Now, is he confused at what he's getting? I mean, maybe you're confused, but if you see someone running down the pipe like this, you see two safeties, boom, post snap, two safeties. You see someone running down the pipe, you know what it is. This is just a high-low on the curl player up top, 54, the guy coming from the B-gap. Pause it for you. Now, I get it. I got the clicker. It's super easy when you got the clicker. But this is just a high-low right here. We're going to run this guy through. This is a perfect call. We'll run this guy through. This mic is going, or mic type is going to run with that. We're going to get basically just a little dagger. Let me clear this thing up. We're going to get a little in, and we're going to get a shallow coming across. This is the, That is the play. And all we're going to do is read this guy high to low. He can't be right. Now, if for some reason you thought you were going to get hot, you've got a shallow coming here, 
and you've got like a little short post right here. I mean, it's, it's easy. This is out of empty. You just need to know where the line is going. Again, this is where you'd potentially, and I'll draw it up from the back end. This is one where I could see him thinking he was going to be hot. I would think I'm going to be hot to the right here. But if I did think that, I would just put it on that short post. Boom, right there. It's, it's wide open. The guy looks like he's looking for it right there. And by right there, I mean right there. Boop. Right there. But if you're not, it's just this guy. Right there, boom, to right there. Now, he eventually gets there. But not because he didn't try to jack this thing up. One more time. Again, people trying to make all these things all complicated. This is, they're rushing four, playing Tampa two with a bunch of linebackers underneath. On third and long. And they get it right here. So again, that's the fourth one now. And I'm not convinced that the creeper had that much to do with it. Now you can see the center. Center makes a point to 55. Right there, boom. Now, five-man protection. This is where you're going to get into what is a normally a 5-0 call. Five on five. So basically double fan, and that center's on an island. It's exactly what they do. Center does a nice job working to the right, and they do a great job center right guard coming off to the nickel. I mean, this is nice. This is not good, bad pass pro at all. You know, to me, I, I can't tell if he, think, if he thinks he's hot. I could see you being hot here. Technically, you are hot here. If you don't trust that they can pick you up, you got to throw the hop. You can't peek it. To me, it looks like he catches it. Watch this. Catch it, peek. He looks to the right. And then he, like, loses his mind. He's blocked. You either have to see him pick it up or you have to have your eyes down the field. But you can't catch it, freeze. But again, maybe the creeper got Baker, but the creeper didn't get the pass pro. Creeper didn't get the concept. And they hook it up on a third and 16. So now we're back into empty again. We got three more. He checks this one. And he's checking to exactly what he wants. From empty, three by two, brings the back in. The old Patriots shift. It's zone. Nobody moves. We went from the running back outside to the running back in the backfield, three by one. This is just rotation week. I mean, bring in the will. Three dog zone. Three zone. I mean, it doesn't get better than this to throw the glance. Now, I will tell you, I, I don't know what he's doing footwork-wise, five-step drop to throw this glance. And maybe this is supposed to be an in. Either way, he misses this thing by a lot. So, on Baker, accuracy. Or on the wide receiver for running the wrong route. To me... This looks, I don't know, man. I, originally, I thought it was a glance, but now that he's taken five from gun, I want to say it's an in route, and he just misses this thing by five yards. But that thing is, that's wide open NFL standards. This is a perfect look. You love throwing free access ins versus rotation versus middle field closed. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. He's coming down. This guy's coming down into the flat curl area. We're going to wrap this thing right around him. And... Again, I can't tell if this is supposed to be a glance or an in. I think it's supposed to be a, I, I really don't know. I counted the steps. It's six steps with his outside foot. Usually that's not a glance. How deep is it? Is it 20 yards? You know, that's probably supposed to be an in route. And he just leaves it out wide, to be honest with you, more than anything else. One, two, three, four, five. Or rip that in. It's wide ass open. I mean, is that the creeper? That's just bad throw. You know, here the back comes up. You see the back blunt him. I mean, that that's perfect. I'll tell you, I love Odell. I think that's Odell's effort here, the wide receiver. From the backside, we'll talk about the pass pro. They are sliding to our right. See him bring it in. He checks to the play he wants. They get to a little a little layered route. Going the other way, watch back come up and blunt 55. Boom. Again, this the half slide stuff, and this is the other part of it. It's not really half slide when we talk pass pro. So these four 
are going to these four. And the reason why this is the half slide element of it is usually by the uncovered lineman. So however you declare who this, who the uncovered guy is. So, I mean, you could get, they could make a call for either three man slide or four man slide. But really when you get this shade one, two, I, whatever it is, it's going to be a four man slide. So these four go into these four right here. The back is going one to two to scan. And we'll talk about going the other way in a, in a few, but again, this is, you know, Again, Creeper, really? That caused the interception? One, two, three, four, five. You know, if anything, I would tell him, you know, I like the look off, the eyes right down the middle of the field. One, two, three, four, five. When you hit that back foot, I, I usually like to get my eyes to the target. So this type of stuff doesn't happen. But again, to me, it looks like he's hitching to his left, our right. You know, is that because the right tackle's in his lap? One, two, three, four, five. No, no. He just misses the throw. This throw is just not good enough. I mean, take it. That, that's a big window for an in route. He's missing that by yards. Look at Odell's effort here to go make this tackle, though. I love seeing that. I love watching effort on turnovers. Two more. We got a little three by one. Okay, now we got some picks. Another pick. So this is where it starts going bad. Again, does this creeper look familiar? I mean, bringing four to the back, eat up the back. I get it that you eat up the back. All right, we can make the argument, have five guys out, do a different protection. But this is just an, op an option to Landry. And he just gets guzzled up. It's like a Slurpee. I mean, this if this, this is your dude running an option by the number two down here to the bottom, I mean, that's a blanket. You can't throw that, but you also can't have a, a big-time wide receiver get covered like that by anybody on an option route. And I, I'm just guessing it's an option because of the release he takes, that like skip off. The skip off is usually an option release. But pff, third and four, get your dude covered at the sticks like that. That's a, I mean, don't throw it, but come on, bro. Help us out. The other thing here is that when he skips off the line like this as a as an option key, for me, teaching options, when he's inside leverage like that, he wants you to go out. The best moves are to stick it and cross his face, get across and make him grab you and cross his technique. So if he was outside, I would wanna come up, stick it in and get out. You wanna cross his technique. You don't wanna make it easy on him to trail you to the out for this to happen. Especially on a third and sticks type of play. So I mean, you know, is that a creeper? I don't know. It's not. It's just a it's a bad route, a nice play by the DB, a bad decision from the quarterback. But is that because of a creeper? I mean, you tell me. Does that pressure look like it impacted him? I don't know. From the back end, again, they're going 54. To me, this is a solid protection or what would be called, a, I guess, in the article, a man protection. The line and center is going to 54. Nice job by the back. 55 lets him off easy by kind of babying. Again, the other part about these creepers is when you drop in defensive ends, it doesn't scare anybody. Like if you're seeing this on a pitcher as an NFL quarterback, you see that they're dropping defensive end type guys like 58, you got to attack the middle of the field. I know that this is, you know, a third and four. You're trying to get your guy the ball on an option. You know, you would hope that, that it's better than that. But again, to me, just the creeper element of it isn't directly impacting those two interceptions. They were both bad decisions. One was a terrible route by the wide receiver. And this is the one that gets broken down a lot in the article. So I'm going to spend some time talking about this. Let's go back and see exactly what the score is, actually, before we even jump into it. Because now you got to think, you've just thrown two picks. We're late in the game. We're down a bunch, right? 36 to 13. You've thrown two picks. Halfway through the fourth, fourth quarter, three by one, four verticals. They hit you with a field nickel pressure. Middle field closed. 
And they're only blitzing four, rushing four, not even blitzing four, rushing four, and you get hit free. And so in the article, well, let's look at some images here first. So in the article, they have these kind of cool images that we'll talk about. And really, to me, I want to pay most attention to the back. So usually, when you have this technically slide side, so these offensive linemen are sliding this way. Again, man side, a little bit of a misnomer. These two defensive linemen are basically for those two offensive linemen. they got to sort it out. It's not just man-to-man -man defense like basketball. Tice, not even totally different, irrelevant thing, but the analogy cracked me up. Slide, the thing about the slide thing for this play is normally the back is away from the slide side. So if you're going to identify usually the slide part of it sliding this way, the back is going to be coming this way immediately or lined up over here. So very rarely, it's like unicornish to see a slide and the back to the same side having any sort of read. So it's hard for me to tell you exactly what they're doing pressure uh, pass pro wise. I would guess to me, and this is just my interpretation of this, is this is what is called a solid protection. So they are going to the mic. And now I should say that. Let, let's just operate under the assumption that it's this, that it's exactly what they say it is on in the article. So we're going to get these three going to these three. The back is to this side. So the back has a duel from this guy, one, to anybody who's outside him, to now what I'm used to calling scan. So he's going to scan the other side for any four to the opposite side. And that four is the nickel coming from the field. So he basically, in reality, he's going one to two to the nickel coming from way over here. He needs to get there and block him, take the hit off. There's absolutely zero way that a nickel should get a free hit on the quarterback with six people protecting and they're only rushing four. So here's another image from the article. Again, this is the, the basketball thing to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense when, and I'm, when the basketball thing I'm meaning that Mike Tice, who is a whole different story on a whole different day, uh, trying to make sense of what the easiest way to talk about, you got this guy, you got that guy, man-to-man, -man, zone, whatever, basketball analogy. They don't have enough dudes to one side. So how they're going to cover this, you know some sort of crazy exotic, someone's dropping out of it in essence. But the reality is, is that number three on the defense, the blue number three, he's blitzing. The back needs to go get him. And finally, the last thing they talk about in the article, we see the nickel coming free here, 26. But the other thing is this element, this idea being that when he comes free like this, let's just say he's free and he's really hot. They basically say, well, Baker's got nowhere to go with the hot. Well, he's not looking. If, if this is a hot, usually this is either a peak or a turnout, like a Y stick. Or if it's a vertical, sometimes they'll get with and look. And you have to throw it. You you can't. There's no like sort of if you got to maybe I have it. Oh, he's covered. You throw it. You throw it either at his feet, back shoulder, something. So to me, it, it wasn't that he turned and, and saw it and, oh, no, the hot's covered. The, the hot's never covered. You have to throw the hot. So now back to the image. We see the nickel come from the field. We'd love the back to go from 24 to scan. Again, I don't know anything about the back or what they've got going on, but they had two critical errors, in, in my opinion, in this video. The first play and this last play. That's a brutal shot for a quarterback to take. A guy running from that much depth to get a free hit. But where's he supposed to throw the ball? You either catch and throw the hot to the Y if you think you're hot, but you're not hot. So, I mean, it, it's impossible for me to blame Baker here. To me, he's not hot. It's on the back. So yeah, creeper-wise, did they get him right here? Yep. They're up a bunch. End of the game, they got him. Boom. No good options. So, you know, for me, there, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear. I'm not trying to pick on the element that this creeper simulated pressure thing isn't doesn't have some validity isn't work obviously in certain cases but for the example in this huge piece about pressure in the league you know seven clips probably the one that was the best was the last one and they were down by a lot and they got a free runner in my opinion because the halfback did not do the correct thing and so yeah did it cause him to throw two picks absolutely were the two picks because of the creepers though i think that's a stretch
just my take on it. Doesn't mean that the you know the whole set and the article doesn't make a lot of sense. I think it, there is a lot of interesting nuggets in there that will help a lot of people better understand it. But again, for me, you know, getting past kind of the, the gloss of, of Mike Tice, maybe overcomplicating elements within the article and the nuggets about, you know, how different teams are using zero with Belichick and what the evolution of, you know, some hot coverages look like moving forward. The creeper thing to me, I don't know. I'll, come at me in the comments. Let me know if you totally disagree. You know, for me, uh, I'm not sure if I'm willing to put that Browns L on the creepers as much as it was put on the article. So let me know. Appreciate it. Have a good one. See you next time.